Hey friends, today I want to go over a topic that I think is kind of becoming, you know, somewhat ubiquitous. Uh, you see modular synths everywhere, and you ask yourself, well, I'm a, you know, complex electronic music producer, do I need a hardware modular synth? And I have one, and I really enjoy it, and it's really fun to use and mess around with. But I think that it's really important for those that have Max for Live or are curious about upgrading to Max for Live to kind of see what is actually possible with Ableton Live. Ableton Live is a modular synthesizer, even before you get into Max. But um, let's just go ahead and dive in and, and listen to what I have going on here. So there's there's some levels of complexity going on here in the in the drums there's a beat repeat kind of doing some things and then in the wavetable there's uh, you know I've got a a rack of some effects and then I've got if you look at the matrix there's a lot of modulation going on in fact let's just go ahead and watch the the modulation going on in the matrix we have we've gone so far as to even have the modulators modulating each other, which is, you know, kind of part of part and parcel to a pretty classic modular sound, right? Um, I should also say, if you're interested in Wavetable, um, I did a tips and tricks kind of style video uh, with Ableton Wavetable. It's pretty, pretty awesome in and of itself. But in this case, you know, we're looking at how can we expand this? One thing that I can't do is in this matrix, if I click on anything in this matrix um, that I haven't messed with yet, let's say like filter drive or something, see how it appears in the matrix? That's great. But if I click on the dry wet of my frequency shifter, you know, it doesn't show up. That's because the nature of this modulation matrix inside of Wavetable is locked to the parameters inside of the device. Like, I can't edit this or this or this, you know, with the modulators, the, you know, amplitude modulator, envelope one, envelope two, and both these LFOs. I can't use those with external effects. And the spirit of modular, the idea of modular is that anything can affect anything. That you could take any modulation signal and send it to any place, or any other modulation signal and send it to any other modulation destination. So <laughs> maybe this will make more sense when I show you, but what I'm going to do is instead of starting from scratch all over again, I've already got something going here. What I want to do is add you know, more and more complexity to what's going on by adding envelopes and LFOs to the aspects of the sound as well as the effects, okay? So let's just go ahead and explore what's possible. I can go up here and search envelope. So let's go to my max folder and here's envelopes. I'm gonna drag it and drop it in here. Now, envelope is really, really awesome. Basically, every time it receives a MIDI note, it fires an envelope, right? So I can have these notes that I have inside of this clip as you can see, just these notes, every time a note fires, it will send a, a trigger signal to the envelope to make an envelope, right? So what I get whenever I play this is watch the envelope. So now I can map, by clicking map, I can map this to different parameters inside of Wavetable and really just take this take this sound to the next level. Maybe one thing we can do is go to modern and I'll return these to zero so we still get the original sound. But what I'll use is the envelope, perhaps maybe I'll make a longer attack. And I'll map that to the wave folding. Just by clicking on map, it blinks, see it blinks, boom. And now it is mapped. So it goes from zero to 100%. Let's listen to what happens. Now, you could say, well, why don't you just use an envelope inside of Wavetable to do that? Well, both of my envelopes, if you'll notice, have different curves, okay? These curves are different than this curve. In fact, I could make this one kind of decay downward, and I get this sound. So, this is adding to the feature set of Wavetable. We're actually, we're enhancing the feature set in Wavetable to take more envelopes. In fact, maybe something that would be really de demonstrative of this is to make um, an attack decay really fast. So we get... 
And, and now I can take this effect and kind of like dial it in just right. <laughs> That's pretty sweet. Ripping space time. So now I've kind of I've kind of lessened the effect to make it usable. Okay. So when I click on this guy, this shows and hides multi map. So multi map is really useful in that you can actually take the same envelope shape and apply it to eight different destinations. So now let's choose something else. Maybe we'll go to the voices. Or no, let's go to the amount. We're going to go to the amount of the unison spread. This should be, you know, this should be interesting. So click map, unison spread. And now it goes from zero to 100, which is going to be crazy. So I kind of want to have it start a little bit higher and go down a little bit slower. So let's try something else. Maybe we'll go to the high pass filter frequency, but again, trying to make this as subtle as possible. Okay, so now we've changed this sound a little bit and we've enhanced the sound a little bit. Let's see what else we can do. I also wanted to take this time to tell you that I'm creating online Ableton courses. I'm really excited about this. They'll be covering macro topics like mixing, sound design, composition and songwriting, live performance, and more. I should say you could always learn anything that you want to learn off of YouTube, but much of the time it's really hard to find exactly what you're looking for. And a lot of the time the, the information is not really relevant or factual even. These courses will be thorough, optimized, and organized to help take your skills to the next level fast. And at the time of this video, I've only begun creating the courses, but if you want to be notified when they're available, click this link and I'll notify you. All right, let's get back to it. So another thing I can do is I can grab an LFO. I'll search LFO, and then this LFO up here, this is a Max for Live device as well. And I can the cool thing about LFO is I can drag it and drop it and put it anywhere so I can keep it close and have a visual reference and stuff. So LFO is a lot like envelope. In this case, what I can do is I can map this to, you know, any parameter. Maybe I'll map it to the volume and I'll make it really fast so we can get like what you would consider maybe amplitude modulation. So in the modular spirit, this is this is great because the LFO can get really fast and you can do what's known as amplitude modulation. Like it goes, it spins up so fast that it starts to make its own note. You can go all the way up to 40 hertz there. So instead of doing that though, that's just one you know example. I'll return this back to negative nine. So keeping in line with the modular spirit, Know that no matter what you're doing, any modulator can go to any parameter, including other modulators. So maybe something that would be really fun is to edit the envelopes with this LFO. So what I can do is I'll turn the rate real low, okay, so that it's kind of long, and I'll hit map. And if I go back over here, I can map that to my attack. And now you'll see the attack is changing over time pretty slowly, right? It's going pretty low all the way up to yeah, pretty high. Let's just see what this sounds like when I hit play. It's long and then short. Now, because this modulator is modulating this modulator, it might be a good idea to get up in here and increase the ranges a little bit so we can really hear what's going on. Let's kind of really increase these ranges and see what we get. So as you can see, it's this, because of this LFO, we're getting a lot of different variations on the sound. And see, when you use the modular synth, you can really start to create a, what's known as a patch that kind of just takes off on its own. It, it, it creates its own sounds. And this can be really useful, and I'll show you in a little bit what I mean by that. So now that we've kind of used envelope and LFO to change aspects of this wavetable, let's listen to this drum beat. It's a super basic drum beat. There's not really much going on here. But yet again, let's go ahead and expand this drum beat with some LFOs and, and envelopes. Let's go ahead and use this LFO here. And what I'm gonna do is I have this beat repeat. And what I'd like to do 
is I'd like to get the beat repeat to do more. I'd like to hear more um, variations and stuff going on. Right now, we just have... It'll, every once in a while on the downbeat, it'll change its beat repeat of that kick drum. Well, that's not enough for me. I'd like to, to maybe I'll change this rate a little bit and I'll hit map to the offset. And what this will do is it'll choose a different place to repeat, okay? And obviously that's a bit fast, so I'm gonna turn that down a little bit. I think I'll also change the chance so that it's higher. Let's just go ahead and listen to this with the chance all the way up. That's fun, okay, so it's starting to change the beat a little bit, but the beat's kind of dropping out too much. If I turn it on mix, I'll never have the beat drop out and I won't get enough variation. So in the <laughs> yet, yet again in the modular spirit, let's map, this will be crazy, let's go ahead and map the LFO also to whether it's an insert or whether it's a mix or whether it's a gate, okay? So that's <laughs> a pretty interesting idea. Let's see what happens here. So it switched to mix. Now it's back to insert, so if it repeats, it's gone. So we've got a lot going on here. This is this is really moving the beat in some interesting and crazy ways, right? Okay, so now that that's done, we could also maybe do an opposite LFO to this filter frequency. So the filter is kind of filtering down the repeated effect. If I hit map, go to frequency, now it's gonna shift this filter around. So maybe we'll go down to about halfway and maybe not not quite all the way to 100. So now we're kind of shifting the frequencies. So let's let's listen to this now. Another thing I'd like to do is an, is occasionally do a volume decay. So I'll occasionally have that going down or not depending upon the LFO and I'll have it about halfway. Another thing I can do is map it to pitch. So as you can see, I'm just haphazardly changing this uh, pitch decay situation going on. Let's try that too. And so now we've just really got a lot of modulation going on. so much fun. All right, so let's let's get let's take it even farther. Let's take it even farther. I'm going to grab yet another LFO at a different rate. And we're going to use this LFO to change some aspects of the drums. So within this simpler, anything can modulate anything. That's a really important thing to know. Let's look at the hi-hats. So something I can do with the hi-hats is I can change the decay. So I'm going to turn the the release way down, the sustain all the way down so I can get I want to get a different decay rate for this hi-hat. Right? So what I want to do is hit map and go to decay. So now I'll have this LFO changing this decay. Now this is just wild, so what I need to do is kind of tame that. So we're going all the way up to, yeah, 100 milliseconds and down to zero. Let's listen to what this sounds like. <laughs> Gonna have to increase that just a little bit. And what I'll do is I'll just make this solid this whole time so we can really listen to that hat. So if I solo this hat out, you hear... <laughs> That's the beat repeat going. I'll just solo the hat without the beat repeat. So you can hear it's dynamically changing its decay rate. This is a really common complex beat move here. Okay. So as you can see, we could just keep going on forever. In fact, you can even change the modes of the LFOs to get, you know, more of like a random thing going on and, and we could sync it to the beat. So now we get um, some random results based on BPM oriented changes in the LFO. So now we get... <laughs> All right, so the final step here, as far as I'm concerned, is now doing some committing. So now that I've I've got all this randomness going, you're like, okay, so what's the use of all this? This is really, you know, this is great and all, but how how could I write a song with this? How could I how could I use this material? Well, if you go to the arrangement view, 
you could capture the outputs of these tracks as audio tracks and the the nuggets or the 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 really amazing parts that you end up recording out of these parts you could use in your compositions and in your music right um, because you know using a lot of of these modulators can you know jack your cpu and and take a lot of resources away from what you would, you would otherwise use for mixing so in this case i am going to capture this by making an audio track below each one of these and i'm going to choose from this wavetable track, I'm going to choose wavetable as the input. And then from this drum rack, I'm going to choose the drum rack as the input. So now I have two armed tracks and I can just let them play. There are all kinds of good nuggets in there. Okay, so now I've, I've collected a bunch of audio and I have all kinds of crazy sounds in here. Let's see what happened in Wavetable. Whoa, that's a good one. And then over here we've got all kinds of wacky. <laughs> so then you can just cut it up to your heart's desire, you know? Arrange yourself a nice, you know, new rhythm or, you know, composition out of these outputs. Cool. So I might explore this even deeper if people are really interested in this. There's so much you can do with Max for Live in kind of transforming Ableton into the modular synthesizer of your dreams. So if you enjoy this kind of content, like, comment, subscribe. Uh, much love, everybody. I'll talk to you soon.